Welcome back to Typecast Heroes, where we believe typology can save the world. I'm Amanda Fulgeson. And I'm Jesse Miller, and today we are continuing our series on the 16 types. Just a reminder, if you're new to Typecast Hero, this series serves as a teaser for our 16-episode podcast series that we are going to be debuting at the end of this summer, 2020. This summer. <laughs> if it kills me, this summer it's it'll happening. come out. If you don't know what that series is about or the research that We've been conducting for the past several months please go watch our very first video welcome to typecast hero for all of the details but we are still actively looking especially for istps so if you're here to learn a little bit about yourself please 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 contact us on reddit discord facebook or instagram mm -hmm. or leave a comment on this video down below and say that you want to be interviewed the interview process takes about 15 minutes for istps it does not take long and you can do it through text voice record or video so today we are talking about the ISTPs, and I recently came under some criticism that I play type favorites too much. However, I think every type brings something unique, mm -hmm. and I like to appreciate the types that I feel are undervalued in MBTI, um, so I'm not going to apologize for saying that. So ISTPs are one of my favorite to interview and to work with because when I place a call, for an interview, they come, they answer their questions in about 20 minutes, and then they're on their way. And I think, and the answers are insightful, concise, and accurate. And it's something I personally really like. So they are very, they have a tendency to be very capable. They have a tendency to be very um, strong, mm -hmm. determined, just great human beings. And I really like ISTPs. Too many people don't except being an ISTP. So that's another reason that I like to kind of build up those types. And um, they are really famous for what I call like a drive-by truth. They just like, they will be really quiet for a long time about an issue. And then they're going to give you something super insightful out of seemingly nowhere. And then they're going to go back on to just doing life really <laughs> well. So ISTPs are incredible. So whenever we go through the type videos, and just as we did in the cognitive function videos, if you've watched all those, you'll see that we like to make a point that people relate to each other and they relate to each other's experiences. And that's a beautiful thing. But one thing that we like to focus on here is making sure that as you're listening to the descriptions of these types and um, certain things that they may experience, that doesn't necessarily mean that you are that type. So just make sure that you're in your default setting, which is what we say, um, and that you're remembering who you are at your core, not just who you are in just a stressful situation or just a fun situation or anything like that. Just remember that any type can be anything. So just because you may not fit into the stereotype or you may fit into a stereotype for something else, really don't buy into that stuff. Just learn the cognitive functions and figure yourself out that way. Okay, so now what we are going to do today is we're going to give a brief overview of the ISTP cognitive function stack. And if you have not seen our video, what is the cognitive functions or what is the cognitive stack or what are cognitive functions, go watch those videos because that is going to give you the background knowledge necessary to understand what we are talking about today. So let's start with the first part of the cognitive function stack, which is the hero or dominant function. So this is the function that you lead with. It is the one, no matter which system you use to look at typing, if you're looking at socionics, if you're looking at MBTI, if you're looking at some other variation on YouTube, everyone agrees that this first function is a huge part of your identity. And so it's called the dominant or the hero if you're in John Beattie's system or um, Isabel Myers and Catherine Briggs. So this is introverted thinking. So we have a whole video on introverted thinking that you can go watch, but basically introverted thinking is a subjective set of data and logical systems that you have decided are yours. So if you have TI as your hero function, that means that you look at all of the available data and information and you pull it all into yourself and you put it into like a little totem of this is what makes sense to me. And when you interact with your environment, when you interact with life, you are looking at everything through that lens. Sometimes this means that they can come across as a little closed-minded or even seem a little aggressive, but that's just because they believe so strongly in their opinions and they've taken time to carefully accumulate and cull all of the best data that they possibly can. And if it wasn't something that made sense to them, they would discard it. So when they have an opinion about something, they've taken the time to carefully cultivate that opinion. And so that's why it tends to come off as very pushy. A little bit. Sometimes. Tends to. 
Yes. <laughs> it also creates a strong sense of identity. So it can create a strong sense of identity. Again, I was called out on that because sometimes if you haven't, if a TI dominant has not taken the time to make sure things make sense to them or if they're in a bad place in their life, sometimes that can lead to a sort of identity crisis because their opinions are so crucial to who they are as a person. So when they are in that crisis mode, when they're trying to make their decision about something, or if a tenant of their belief system is changing, if it's something that they believe for a long time, and all of a sudden they're gonna change, that can actually bring about a bit of a identity crisis, and it can cause a lot of pain for them because they have spent so much time creating this perfect system that makes sense. And when you have to pull out a piece of it, it can take it can be very slow mm -hmm. to change and um, it can be kind of frightening and a little bit discouraging to a TI dominant. So now we're going to talk about the perceiving functions that the ISTP use. And if you haven't watched the extroverted sensing video, go watch that because I'm giving you all sorts of homework today, ISTPs, because <laughs> I know you guys love to sit and watch this kind of thing. So um, an ISTP is a bridge type. All types are a bridge type of a sort, but they are a bridge perceiving type, which means in their auxiliary or second position, they have extroverted sensing. And then because extroverted sensing is on an axis with introverted intuition, that is in their third position, which is also called the child. Again, depending on whose theory you follow, it seems to be that you can use these two middle functions pretty equally. So what happens for an ISTP is they have a tendency to use their extroverted sensing primarily when they're younger and then as they get older they start getting more into their third function and that's going to cause a loop. So extroverted sensing, just Cliff Notes version, is very much in the moment and it's atten attached to reality. So it's all the concrete data and all of the information immediately in front of a person. Introverted intuition is going to be a set of abstract theories and concepts and ideals. So what happens for a ISTP is because they are naturally introverted, they are going to go from their introverted thinking into their introverted intuition. And I literally just had a case, I was typing somebody today, who came to me and their test results had said INFJ and INTJ, but when I looked at their test results, they were scored highest on introverted thinking, introverted intuition, extroverted sensing. That's an ISTP who's in a loop, cut and dry. Because what happens is when you spend all of your time inside your own head and you're looping between these two things, you're going to feel very intuitive mm -hmm. and you're going to have all of these same insights and you're going to be able to future pace forward just like, not just like, but similar to an INTJ or an INFJ, any NI dominant. And this makes them sensitive to their environment at times because they spend all of the time in their head looping between what do I think, what does this mean, what do I think, what does this mean, that their extroverted sensing function, which is their parent, kind of pulls them up by the ear and is like, hey, come back to reality, it's time <laughs> to focus, focus. Um, and it can make them easily irritated when they are stuck inside their head. Um, so extroverted sensing, because it's in that parent position, we often call it like a compulsion, mm -hmm. like you can't help but pay attention to it. So this means that ISTPs do not like doing the repetitive work because extroverted sensing has a craving for newness and for new experiences. So if you look at the stack of an ISTP, if you take their what do I think versus their extroverted sensing, which is what is happening right now, and then you put it together with their child function, which is introverted intuition. And remember, we refer to that child function as kind of bratty. And if you put that all together and you put them in front of a page of numbers and you make them crunch them all day, they're probably going to be very unhappy. ISTPs don't tend to like repetitive work. They don't tend to like things without mates. They don't like things that don't make sense to them and to their personal system. So this can make it very difficult for them to focus because they're like, I don't want to do this. This doesn't make sense to me. This moment is, I should be seizing this moment and this doesn't mean anything, so I'm not going to do it. Mm -hmm. And I have had ISTPs tell me that because of these functions, because of, and especially because of introverted intuition in their third function, they get kind of depressed when they are bored or they're doing a job that seems meaningless or soul-sucking, and they get very unhappy and very upset with this. But the good thing about having an introverted intuitive child is you can set realistic goals. So it can help you see where you want to go, and it's going to be grounded in reality because you've got the extroverted sensing parent and then it's gonna match up with what you think, and so you're gonna have this logical set of steps to get you where you wanna go. 
So oftentimes on MBTI career sites, I see ISTPs should be carpenters. ISTPs should be first responders. They should be firemen and that's where we should leave them. And you guys probably make great firemen mm -hmm. and craftsmen and all of those things. However, ISTPs also make amazing surgeons. They can make amazing doctors and lawyers if they if that is what they choose because they are able to use all of these functions together so well when they have a goal. So an ISTP that does not have a goal that they are working towards is probably going to feel really lost. So one of my favorite um, ISTPs in pop culture is Ron Swanson from Parks and Rec. Um, he's he's a great example of a um, of an ISTP. Personally, you can argue if you don't agree, that's fine. But he always has this wise insight. So he'll be kind of stoic, kind of quiet for a long period of time. And then all of a sudden he drops some insight. And that's what I meant earlier in the video when I said they've got drive-by insight. It's like they won't say anything for a long time. And then when they say something about whatever situation you're going into, it is so insightful and um, helpful and inspiring. And that comes from that introverted intuitive child combining with that introverted thinking. So when those two things work together, the and the ISTP uses their extroverted sensing to survey an area and see what's wrong, they can combine those three functions. Now this is also gonna impact their fourth function, which is extroverted feeling. Extroverted feeling is when you look at all of the people, all of the values and the morals and the judgment systems of the people around you and you take that into consideration. Because it's in the fourth function, remember fourth function is the inferior function or aspirational, which we will get into later. Um, but that means that we feel kind of self-conscious about it. We feel kind of insecure. So if you tell an ISTP that they don't care about your feelings, that's a mistake. They're going to get defensive. If you're in a relationship with an ISTP, no matter what the dynamic is, um, a romantic one, a friend one, a parent one, um, if they are your parent or if they are your child, they, that is a mistake. You should probably never tell them that they don't care about you because again, they already feel self-conscious about it. Mm -hmm. And I've noticed, especially for ISTP women, they tend to be incredibly defensive about their extroverted feeling function because society tells them that they should care about feelings. They already feel inferior about this, this function. Mm -hmm. And then if you're sitting there and you're saying, you don't really care about me, that's a problem. So do be careful and conscientious of that. So they tend to not be very good at verbal affirmation. You're probably not going to hear verbal affirmation from an ISTP, but what they are usually good at, and they can get better, they can train themselves, they can learn just like anybody else, but what they are good at is actions. And so if they spend time on you, if they do things for you, especially because of extroverted sensing, they are going to show you love in that way. So I would take what you get with the ISCPs and just be excited for their very capable and um, focused self. So let's kill some stereotypes. So ISCPs are usually, like I said earlier, allocated to building stuff. Yep. You guys are more than building stuff. And if you like building stuff, you're good at building Go for stuff. It. Keep building stuff. Yep. However, you can also be incredible academics because you are based in concrete reality and if you did not watch Extroverted Sensing, you should because Extroverted Sensing talks about how much we are both in mm -hmm. awe of your ability to be in the real world because we struggle with that. So if you are connected to reality and you have those intuitive insights because of your NI child and you have your TI to put it all together, you can make a great academic. You don't have to, but you could. Mm -hmm. You can also be great doctors, mathematicians, chemists. Um, I've seen some amazing ISCP writers or athletes, pretty much whatever your goal is in life. I was just about to say athlete, actually, because I feel like that's just so, it's very goal oriented. You have to, you have to be disciplined. Mm -hmm. That's something that ISCPs can do is have some discipline. I'm very envious of that because I have none. Um, <laughs> so, She's not wrong. I'm not, yeah. Uh, at least I can admit it there, right? But ISCPs, that is something that they are very, very good at. It is kind of incredible to watch. Role of society in regards to ISCPs. First off, don't step all over their ideas because, again, ISCPs tend to be people of very few words. And if they're sharing an idea with you and you step on it, that is the quickest way to hurt their feelings. And they won't share any more ideas with you. Mm -mm. It'll take them a very long time for them to want to open up to you again and start to share. And why would you want to miss out on their insight? They got mm -hmm. stuff to share. And also, if you share a problem with them, they're probably going to try to fix it. 
So if they try to fix it and you're sitting there and you're just like constantly saying, no, that's not going to work. That's not going to work. That's not going to work. That doesn't really help any situation. Mm -hmm. Then you're upset and now they're upset because they feel like they failed you. So everybody's upset. This is not the way to handle the, the situation. <laughs> everybody's just upset and sad now. I'm sad thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> this is one of those types that you would want to go to them and say, hey, I just need to vent and I just need you to listen. And then they'll probably sit there and listen to you and then literally just be like, so are we good? <laughs> mm -hmm. That's it. But And so they don't have to tell you how to fix something, but that is going to be their immediate uh, response to you while you're venting. And then the role of ISTPs in society, like I mentioned, with the killing the stereotypes, you guys can be whatever you want if you set the goals and if it aligns with your introverted thinking values. So basically, do what you want to do and get it done. Mm -hmm. Be the ones who tell it like it is. Be the ones who do that drive-by insight. Be the ones who keep the rest of us grounded, but can go real deep and then come up for air, which mm -hmm. is one of my favorite qualities about ISTPs. So for a little bit of personal growth, as we always do with these videos, ISTPs, we would recommend that you try to tap into your extroverted feeling, that inferior aspirational function, your fourth function, earlier on than life would typically have you um, tap into it. So we normally see that fourth function really start to show itself and start to thrive in like 30s to 40s range, age-wise. Um, but if you know that you're an ISTP, you know that this is maybe a weak spot, then I would really recommend tapping into it much sooner than that because people need to know that, they, that you care. And even though your way of showing that you love is there, it's not that you don't love, it's just that you have a very part particular way to show it, other people have different love languages. So my recommendation there would be to learn the love languages of the people around you. Learn their types as well. That's why we're doing this. That's it's mm -hmm. to give you a language, you know, to explain yourself and to also understand others better than you do right now. So tap into FE, show people the love that they need to feel from you and just be happy because being human is hard. This should make it just a little bit easier. Thank you for watching our video. Go subscribe to our channel. Yes, subscribe, like, comment, share. Interview. Interview. If you're an ISTP who hasn't interviewed, please leave a comment below or again, check us out on Facebook, Reddit, Discord, or Instagram. Um, if you have interviewed, we still need all the other types. So. Oh, and if you're on Reddit, we have a subreddit now. Oh, we did. Someone. Um, we should make a story about this today. Yes, we should. Someone created a subreddit for us, which was very sweet. Thanks, Yayo Let's Go. Is that his name? Yeah. Oh. Did like, you just read the letters and not actually put it together? I was saying like Yayo. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no. like, what is it, to me, it seemed like Yayo Let's Go. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you on the next Typecast Hero. Bye. Let's gather around the type fire and sing our type fire song. Our M-B-T-I-T-Y-P-O-L-O-G-Y song. And if you feel uncomfortable, then know there's nothing wrong.